last year we went on a big trip because I, I I'm starting to dump the bank and like well, everything I want to do we're doing. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yeah. I'm just yep. being honest. I'm thinking about getting an RV. I'm yeah. living in another country. I'm just being dead honest. So I get their kids together and I go, Hey man, we're going away for like three weeks and we're gonna go to we're gonna start in Africa. <laughs> we're going. <laughs> That's what I said. And I did. I booked it. I booked Kenya. I booked Rwanda and I booked Egypt. I just started. This is all the places I want to start. I want to see natural humans in their habitat. I want to see tribes. I want to see gorillas. I want to see everything. And it's going to be amazing. And my kid, all three of my kids just looked at me and went, Phew. Is this, is this going to be a first class flight? Because that's a long flight. And that's when I realized I failed as a parent horrendously. And I'm warning every blue collar human being in here. Blue collar bus, that, not that everyone does a bus your ass, but a blue collar gets up early in the morning. A blue collar just puts their nose down. They work, they bust their ass. They don't make a lot of money. They pay tons of taxes. There's the ones that are constantly beat up. But when they make it, it's always all for one, one for all. Yes, when you make money growing up with nothing, you're like, hey man, we're going on a trip. I got you. I remember working at Sears and I got a red badge. I'm like, oh my God, drinks on me tonight. I got it. I got an eight cent raise for this. This is amazing. And you take that mentality with your children. And then you go, I'll pay for your computer. I'll pay for your phone. I'll pay for your clothes. I'll pay for your prom. I'll buy your car. I'll pay for your college. But what you're doing is creating little assholes. That's called socialism. I give them and they didn't work for it, so therefore they don't appreciate it. Right. But the problem is, I created this society. I'm the government that failed. And I got so pissed and went, God, I can't even get pissed at them. Because I always used to fly them first class. <laughs> So stupid. If I were to start over, I would have lived in a shack and had a, my own. My wife and I would have had a house on the North Shore, and we wouldn't have told them until they were 18. And then we're like, hey, you know, Airbnb, stay there for a week. And meanwhile, it's just me and my wife's house. And then they will be writing us little letters. They're like, oh, I don't know who owns the house, but we're super appreciative that you have a floor and a bed. I was so pissed. I went, yeah. It is first class. Mom and dad are going first class. Yes! And you three are in the middle row and coach in the very last seat. And they, they were pissed. They're like, oh my God, that's so unfair. That's ridiculous. Why would you do that? Like, because you, why, why not? And I just, can you imagine watching the prices right on a sick day? And, and the finalist Oh, here you are in the finals, Carol from Lindbrook. Now listen, you can win a brand new safari. We'll fly you to Africa. We'll pay for all your meals. We'll pay for your lodging. When you arrive in Kenya, you'll see lions in the wild. You'll see elephants. You'll see natural tribes. In their natural habitat. You will then go and watch gorillas and then the pyramids. Oh, the price is right. Can you imagine that person going, now, quick question. Is the flight first class? Because if it's not, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass it to my. <laughs> it, it, I will say this. I will, well, yeah. Well, I will say this. It was a sick. It was an amazing trip. First thing, 
the gorillas. Now, the reason why I want to see a gorilla in the wild is another thing, I'm just going to be honest with you. Before I had kids, um, when I would tour, to pass the time away during the day a lot sometimes I'm in the city and every, I would go to a zoo, but before I'd go there, I'd catch a little, just a little one hit to nice. do with it, <laughs> to sit. And then I'd, I'd walk in the zoo, and I'd always find the gorillas, and I'd sit and try to telecommunicate. <laughs> like, one day I'm gonna find your family, okay? <laughs> so there's, there is a part of me that wants to reconnect with a gorilla in the wild. And I'm thinking about this the whole time. All the gorillas that I've seen in zoos, I'm like, oh my God, this may be like one of those God moments. This may be one of those art deep, like I'm going to see the existence of life through an animal. And we're going to have a, I'm going to see visions. And, and we're getting closer and the guy goes, now listen, we're, we're coming up on the gorillas. Um, there's many gorillas in this particular group has babies, so uh, the father's very protective. Um, you will see the silver back, he knows we're here. Um, and when he presents himself, and he will most, he most definitely will present himself, he will, he will charge. And the way he does that, he will pounce his chest to let you know he this is my family. <laughs> then he will, then if, just don't run. Uh, he may grab you or, or pull you. He may bump you, but just don't run. You, you'll be fine. And the most important thing is if he presents himself, you calm him by doing a simple noise like this, like you're clearing your throat. You're mm, mm. <laughs> And I'm going, okay, right, so 800 pound gorilla comes out. Hey, you want some of this? Like, mm -mm. <laughs> oh, on my life, he didn't even finish his sentence. This thing comes out. <laughs> his ass was this high off the ground, and it looked like concrete. It was just pure muscle, and his head was this long. He had fangs the size of my fingers, and when he, he pounces, she, I didn't even hesitate. Blew me away, and I remember going back to camp. I said, "How did you? How did you? Who? How did you figure that out?" And the guy goes, "Well, there was uh, many trials and error." <laughs> <laughs> I want to see some of those on video, boy. <laughs> Today we're going to try no, no gorilla. Okay. <laughs> Cross out, no, no, gorilla. He didn't like that. <laughs> then, we, then we went to the pyramids. That was fun. They haven't seen tourists in a while. It was right at, you know, I was right as COVID was still, there was still some things going on. And uh, you got to take a camel to go see the pyramids. And they're, now, I, now, they treat animals different outside of our country. Yeah. We're the only country that really goes out of our way to take care of an animal. And that's a precious thing. However, the rest of the world really doesn't think the way we do when it comes to that. And, uh, you know, my guy's kind of slow. And there is no, there's no, like, come on, let's, come on now, we're going to go see. <laughs> they got sticks. <laughs> You know, and now he's pissed. <laughs> Don't hit him, man. No, no. Mm -hmm. Stop it. Come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my wife's yelling. Stop hitting that animal. Now, her, 
her piercing of her voice hit this camel and he just started taking off the other way. So there's seven guys like, go, ah, no, ah, go, ah. <laughs> this is first class. We almost didn't make it. We had to go through Germany. So we fly to Germany, Germany to Kenya, Africa, Nairobi. When we landed in Germany, my kids are pissed. Can't believe you had a coach in the back. And when you're, when you're, we use deodorant perfume. A lot of countries don't. So you start hitting hour four or five, it gets funky. <laughs> My daughter's like, I don't know what country they're from, but it smelled like Lipton soup. <laughs> His neck smelled like Lipton soup. It was disgusting. I could taste the salt off that guy's face. It was horrible, Dad. Hot. hot. The woman next to me had sweat things under her. Look at the guy, she had hair right here. Dude, it was hilarious. So. And my kids are at that teenage world where my wife and I, we're just, we're, we're exhausted. We've got battle fatigue, serious battle fatigue. Yeah, teenagers just, they're, they're emotional terrorists. They really are. They're emotional, they work on both parents. My poor wife, I'm not exaggerating. There, there was a time I left, uh, like Derry, 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 New Hampshire. I don't know where it was. It was snowing, and I was living in Jersey. At the time. I drove seven hours in the snow to get home to my wife and my kids. And on my life, okay, I remember pulling to my street. Like, oh my God, the snow is really getting worse. And my wife's coming down the driveway. Doesn't even know I'm about to pull in. She had slippers on and and a robe. And it's freezing out. <laughs> And she's walking with the days, and I said, what are you doing? She went, I'm leaving. <laughs> Seriously, what are you doing? You got no badge. Said, I'm leaving. I can't do this anymore, Jeff. I can't take these kids anymore. They're, they're so disrespectful. They say the meanest things to me and to one another. I've never heard human beings talk like that to each other. They're vicious, they're disrespectful. They don't, they're just, and that oldest one, I swear she needs to get out of the house. You need to, if you want me to go back in the house, you need to go in there. I asked her simply to clean the kitty litter. She rolled her eyes. I wanted to knock her teeth right down her throat. She does nothing, sits in her ass all day. You go inside and you tell those animals that they are disrespectful and they need to start listening and they need to straighten up. I'm gonna knock that kid's teeth right down her throat. I, I know I believe in the Lord and Jesus. Thank you for this gift to the children. But I'm sorry for saying this. I hate them. I don't want them anymore. And that's what you got to do as a parent. A dad, any child. You never know what you go. I'm, I'm coming back from New Hampshire. <laughs> With my warrior flag, here comes great dad, home to the rescue. I'm gonna come in the house, we're gonna cook some things, we're gonna spend time together and laugh. <laughs> what well, fun we gotta have. It always turns into a special ops mission. You just parachute in. All right, what's going on right now? What are we walking into? I need details. What, what, what kind of weapons am I dealing with? What kind of mental terrorism is going on inside? So now I gotta deal with this. And that's why I know what a cop feels like. He's just, 
He's in for you need to go in there. You tell that you tell that. Okay, ma'am. Oh, uh, I heard you. I can't punch them in the face. That I cannot do. And then you go to their little neighborhood. All, the, all these kids, they're in their own neighborhood by their bedroom, and they all stick together. Okay, Dad, first of all, I'm telling you right now, uh, here's what happened. I know you're gonna ask what happened. I'm gonna tell you what happened. We were all doing homework, swear to God. Doing homework, playing really nice music. Mom comes in, I'm gonna knock your teeth right down. That's how she started. And you know Mom's crazy at times. You've seen it. And I know she loves Jesus, but she's got this whole other side that she fights with. She's on the computer all day. She needs a habit, Dad. You see that there's always new packages showing up? I'm telling you right now, she's out of control. The way she talks to us, like, like we're criminals all the time? You need to get her help, Dad. And they're starting to get you like, yeah, she does order a lot of things online. She does fly off the handle a bit. Yeah, that was... <laughs> you can't go downstairs because she's waiting for you. What you say to them? <laughs> I told her I was going to knock her teeth down her throat. I'm just taking a breath. I'm going to get in there again. So that's where we're at. We're on this trip. My wife took all this pride into put together all the paperwork and they just badgered her the whole we're on line ready to go to africa to get on our flight but we got to go through germany customs and they keep going ma you sure you got everything because you always forget something you always forget. and i'm just looking going, Shut <laughs> she's looking at me get them away from me <laughs> She got a little folder, and there we are. I goes, oh, do you have your passports? Once, do you have your COVID negative test? Uh -huh. Do you have your itinerary where you'll be visiting in the continent of Uns Africa? Do you have your Uns visas? He looks at the paper and goes, those are not visas. Uh -oh. You need a visa to leave the country and to enter Africa. This is just a piece of paper saying you looked up what visa was. <laughs> <laughs> it has some numbers. I'm sorry, you ones cannot go to Africa. Next in line. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> and my wife said, no, excuse me, those, those are visas. Those, these are not visas. She absolutely, it says right on top of the visa. He goes, ma'am, it says visa on the top. What you did is go to a certain point, you got the number, but you have to continue the process. A visa has your picture on it, and it has all IDs. No, there's no picture here. This is not a visa. <laughs> you, well, then how do I get one? He goes, Unz, I'm not the one traveling. The person traveling, it's a responsibility for you to have all your Unz papers in order. I know if I was going to Unz Africa, I would have all my papers in order for all my children, but this is not Unz next. Please, and there is no, can I see your supervisor? There's none of that. <laughs> so while that's going on, my kids grab her folder. She goes, Jimmy, so can we look at that? She's like, no, you may not. And they just take it from her. And they take off. And my wife's like, Jimmy, I got that. Now we're off the line. Oh, my God. She just, when you see the person you've been with every life, drop to their knees not caring who's staring at us in another country. And she sobbed, and I just went, hun, give her a second, give her a second. Let's just leave them here. Let's, this is, this is, it's not worth it. We did our job. We, 
we, we did what we thought was right. The youngest one's 16. Some some 16 year olds don't even have parents. We we did everything we can. We we let's just we don't need them. It, they don't like us. They can't stand us. They think I'm dumb and you're dumber, or vice versa. They don't. They don't. We don't need them. <laughs> As she's looking at, now the kids are coming back. And I'm like, come here, I want to talk to you right now. And they're like, well, we want to talk to you too. We know you guys are getting older. You're both really stubborn. And I'm like, you swear to God, you don't talk to me like this. What that? Please, relax. We know you were stubborn. We know mom doesn't know the computer. We listened to what the guy said. So we started looking up on our phones if there's a business center. There's one down there at gate 17. So we took the folder because we knew you weren't going to let us look at it. So we went down there and, and we got the folder. And then we went to the business center. Mom, you got there, but you had to go to another process. You had to go to Kenya.com and you had to go to Cairo.com and all the different. And then the you have to print a visa. So we did that. Here's your visa. Here's your visa. Here's our visas. I just, my wife and I looked at you like, we can't get rid of them yet. We need them the rest of our lives. And like, and we downloaded things. We don't have to do now. We everything's on an app, so we can download app. Give me your phone. I'm gonna download. I'm like, oh my god, will you do that for me? <laughs> and then they just looked at us. And by the way, we upgrade us to first class. So if you, 